All right. Um, good morning or good afternoon. Well, good night, wherever you are, uh, whatever the timing is. Um, hello. It's been a very long time since my last video. I, to be honest, I don't remember when the last video was. It was uh, it was forever ago. Um, but it is time for Advent of Code again, and so. Um, I thought I would try to start things up. Um, so um, basically, uh, we are now in the second day, and I was looking at the first couple of problem. Let me make my font bigger here. Um. Um, first couple of days, and um, and the, the first couple of problems were were kind of cool. Um, again, from a teacher's point of view, um, I think they're kind of interesting. They can be approached by um, relative beginners in a CS1 class, like AP CSA, or a first uh, class in major in college, or even in a CS0 class. Um, so I think it's worth looking at them, and um, you know, I'm going to do my solutions in closure because that's the language that I like using for my own recreational stuff, and. And, um, you know, I know that if you're a teacher watching this, you might be using Python or Java, um, but um, you should be able to follow along and you'll see a little bit about the language and, um, you know, it might be a little bit of a different approach, which could be kind of cool. Um, so let's uh, let's take a look. So first, uh, this is just uh, the boilerplate stuff at the top of my Clojure program. I'm here in Emacs, which is my editor. And um, for um, Clojure, I use... Cider, which I'm going to start, um, and Cider is um, written by um, um, a, a guy named um, Bodazar. I might be mispronouncing his name, I, so I think he says, "Call him Bug." I'm <laughs> so sorry if I get that wrong. I'm, um, but it really, it's such a great environment, as you'll see if you haven't seen it before. Um, I mean, I wish I had this for other languages, but. Um, or maybe not, I can just keep using um, Clojure and that's good. So the stuff up here is kind of boilerplate, the namespace, and these are kind of um, like Python would have an import, you know, or, or other language have an import. And I'll be using some of these, I'll talk about them in a little bit. Uh, utils are just a few utilities I wrote. Um, hash p is for debugging this is built into closure for string and i'll talk i don't really use closure io i don't think i'll use that here um and specter we'll talk about in a little bit so the way the problem works is um you're going to get this data set uh that, you know this is a sample input they have and i'm going to define that into something called sample and what we'll do here is uh, we'll evaluate that and then we'll evaluate this. And the cool thing here is I can just go here and just go control C, control E and evaluate, you know, what this variable is sample, you know, live in here. Um, and so that is our sample um, data. And so those first three lines are the um, three that's uh, what the first elf is carrying, which are just calorie counts of, of, of what he's carrying. Then the next one has 4,000. The third elf has 5,000 and 6,000. And then uh, et cetera, et cetera. And what the first part of the problem says is you're trying to figure out um, which elf is carrying the most calories. So it's a, a pretty straightforward problem. So for a beginner, they're gonna to want to sum these up. So a beginner might be like, um, and let's get that right after that. So there's no extra white space. Um, so a beginner might say, um, you know, like, like, oh, I can scan through the file. I wanna add 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. That's a sum. Then there's this blank line, then this will be the next sum, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, you know, you might do that with arrays or array lists in Java. Um, I'm not even sure how I would approach this in a Java-based language. I have a friend who also does his write-ups, um, and I'll probably link to this, that in the blog post, and he uses Java. So I think it's, I, I like comparing our solutions because, um, while I don't claim to be an, a closure expert, I'm definitely not. I'm just a hobbyist. And so this is probably not going to be particularly idiomatic. Um, it's a different approach than what would be a good approach in Java. And, you know, it's not a better or worse. It's just, you know, looking at problems differently, which is always cool. Um, so the way I was thinking about this is, well, we first got to split up our data. And um, we could do that 
using Java's string split. So I've noticed I've imported closure string above. Let me just add my line numbers here. Um, up in line um, five. And so I'm going to split my data on the regular expression or my sample on the regular expression string of double new lines. So if I do that, you'll notice that here I've got a list where the first item in the list, I've got that first new line. Let me get rid of that first new line by reevaluating sample and then evaluating this, which is number, new line number, and then 4,000, because that's the only one there, then it's 5,000, 6,000 separated by the new line, etc. So um, splitting on the new line, um, and, and this is something that, that you can um, certainly do in Python easily as well with their uh, string split. And it's, um, you know, it's nice if the kids don't see it, so they can think about like, oh, you can delimit on different things and manipulate your data. So I kind of like that as a way of leading them to that. Well, once we've done that, we've got to take each of these and we've got to um, split those, or I want to split those. So what we could do is we could do something like, let's use the map function and we'll just uh, use a little inline function and we'll split what our, op um, our um, parameter is. And we're just going to split on the regular expression of a single new line. And just to show, so if we have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 100, 200, 300, uh, what am I missing there? I'm missing doing my parentheses right. Oops, what did I do wrong here? Um, oh, no, sorry, I want to just do the string split. Sorry about that. Um, and so notice that the string split, and notice I'm doing that as an anonymous function. I really sh could have just put the um, 100, 200, 300 right in here, but um, this is leading somewhere. But that'll convert us into, um, well, that's actually not what I wanted, I wanted to convert. Um, All oh, right, because um, of course, because it's um, new lines. There we go, and um, so we have. And notice these. I was just going along, and I just put commas between because that's what I'm conditioned to do. Um, but I think this is a great example of just like your brain is doing one thing, but there's a disconnect. But notice how that will split each line into like 100, 200, 300, et cetera. Um, so that's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. But we want to do this for each item in sample. And that's where map comes in. We can take the output of sample and map this function onto it. So let me just clean this up before I run it. Eh. And notice then we get the first item is now changed to 1,000, um, 1, 2,000, 3,000. The second one is just a list of 4,000, then 5,000, 6,000. And that's really nice. Um, but we can do this a little differently because um, instead of having to wrap a function in a function in a function, and that's going to get pretty messy, uh, Clojure has these threading macros. And so the idea is we can do something like, let's um, split our data. So what this is going to do is it's going to basically say, run that function, and then take the output of that function and put it into this function as the last parameter. Um, so it's basically going to throw the results of this of line 24 into this space here on 25. And there we have it. And so now we've got a list of lists. So if we can sum each of these, we're mostly there. Um, the problem, though, is um, we got to convert these into integers. And um, this is brings us to this guy up here, um, Spectre. And um, I've been meaning to play with it oh, for a while now. Um, 
we could just kind of do this traversal. Tra well, there are a lot of ways of doing it. Um, we could have gone through the list first and converted everything. We could have. Um, we could now traverse this list, this this list of lists, and go down. And but um, but Spectre purports to be a library to do advanced manipulations on data structures and um, I don't really know it yet I just started playing with it um, but I thought this would be a good time to do just a little quick play on it and so notice if I run this it it does it converts everything to a list of lists of strings so let's just run I don't know if this is right let's see SP I think select yes select and we're gonna give it SP all of the input from that and see what that does. And that just selects everything. Now let's give it another SP all and notice that it's pulling out 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, the numbers. So what, what, what it's actually doing is we're selecting from our data structure. Now our data structure at this point is a list of lists. So when we say, when we say this first SP all, it says gives me all of those lists. And then the second SP all says inside all of those lists, give me whatever is in there, which are all the integers. And so we can, and then like we can even say, I think this works. If I say SP, I, I don't know, first, it gives it, well, it gives us the first character in each of those strings. Um, but again, I don't really know it all that well, but we're not going to use select Spectre has something called transform and transform lets us go into the data structure and then do an operation and I think read string should work it might not and there we go read string will convert from the integers into the doubles into the sorry strings into the integers and so this transforms the data structure. So it seems like a cool little, um, a cool little um, library, and I look forward to playing with it more, and I hope I have a chance to play with it more um, during Advent of Code. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is we want to sum up each of, those, um, each of those values. So again, it's a list of lists, so we'll use map again, uh, and we're going to map reduce plus on whatever we get. And notice that sums each of these. And then finally, all we really want to do is we want to find the maximum, but you know, I kind of cheated. I, 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 um, I already solved this, so I know the next problem is going to want a little bit different. Um, so I'm going to then put that output into sort and then into reverse and Notice that the 2400 is on front, um, and that's really our number that we want, and we just want the first item there. But before that, since I know we're going to use this in part two, we're going to call this, we're going to write a little function called process, we'll pass it into data, and um, we are then going to process our data. And just to test it, process our sample. So that's good. And then part one, on data is going to be very simple. It's just going to be take our data, call process on it, and then grab the first item. And so we can say part one of our sample, and we're done. Now we could also download our data. Um, what I have for our data is I've already downloaded this. And that is the answer. And this is much larger, as you can see. Now, um, what I did is to download the data is um, I wrote a quick little in my utilities. Um, I basically just wrote a quick little download the data thing. So what we're basically going to do is um, we first check to make sure that the file doesn't already exist because if the file already exists, I don't want to download it again because I don't want to hit the servers multiple times. But otherwise, I just download it. And um, the reason I wrote that is I was downloading it in other ways, but then I... Um, 
I started playing with Vavashka, which or, which is a um, really cool project um, the, 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 by Bork dude, and um, it's it's basically lets you script on the command line using closure, so the the startup time is super quick, um, and so I, I wrote this little downloader for that, you know, it's just a couple lines of code using the built-in curl library. But then I found that when I'm doing advent of code, I kind of like to live in Emacs all the time, so I had to rewrite it as a little utility. But anyway, that's part one. And then part two was very easy. For part two, all it was is we would have to, and let's rename this, uh, let's say, let's call this day 01 part one, and this will be day 02 part one. Um, after we process our data, which sorts it and reverses it, um, part two just says you want to take the sum of the three largest ones. So that's basically, that's the first, uh, so part one gives us the first guy, or actually day 01 part one, and then Part two, which we're not quite working here yet. Um, oh, day 02, part two. Again, a little disconnect there. It's do the first three of them. And for that, all we have to do is take the first three since it's all sorted. And then we can reduce it with the plus and we have our answer. So that's pretty much it. Um, and it's, uh, you know, again, uh, this is a really good way of encouraging, especially if they're using a language like Python, the idea of like pipelining, of like of passing your data through transforms and, um, you know, in a nice quick solution and you can contrast it with different approaches. Um, so that's it for this one. Let's take a quick look at um, day two. Um, so day two, um, and let me make a couple of changes here. Let me call this data one, and let me call this sample one, um, just so I'm not clobbering. Let me, you know, so I'm not you know clobbering spaces. When I'm writing this and all this code, I'll link on my blog post, and it's up on um, GitHub. Uh, not this, I'll have like under day one and day two. Um, but basically, we're playing um, rock, paper, scissors. So I'm just gonna cut this from what I wrote before. And so A, B, and C are the um, computer's move or the elves move, their move, and Y, X, Z, or X, Y, Z are our moves. And the way it works is if you, um, when you play the game of rock, paper, scissors, and again, you, know, you can just read everything, you know, read the website if you're not familiar with the rules, is for part one, you're going to get zero points for, or not zero points, it's one point for an X, two points for if you played Y, you know, um, and three if you played Z, being rock, paper, and scissors, Respectively, let me actually just make sure um, I've got the um, the ordering correct. So I'm just looking this up: rock, paper, and then yes, scissors. Okay. So basically, um, then if you lost the turn, you get zero points on top of that. If it was a tie, you get three points, and if it was if you win, you get six points. So for example, here. We're saying um, the, uh, the elf plays A, so A is rock, and we play B, which is paper. So paper covers rock, so we're going to get six points for the win. And because we played Y, uh, paper, we're going to get two more points for that. That's going to give us eight points total. So what I like about this is um, this is just... Like on one level, it's a super big, not super big, it's it's if statements, right? Um, you can just compare X and you're like, if I played X and you played X, you know, whatever, you know, um, and just do your comparisons. And for a beginner programmer, this is easy. They can do that. Um, 
but we can do it a little bit differently. So uh, what I did, and um, you know, this is not really a fancy solution, is I defined a couple of things here. And so what I first said is, um, well, these are the values that I get if I play X, I get one point no matter what. If I play Y, I get two. If I play Z, I get three. And I also know that if my opponent plays, they'll have the similar values. Um, I also know, and this gets kind of interesting, is um, when I'm playing rock, paper, scissors with my opponent, if we play the same thing, we both have the same value. So if we subtract them, our result is going to be zero. All right, if we both play, you know, both play paper, it's gonna be two minus two, it's zero. And so, well, that's kind of easy. On the other hand, it's rock, paper, scissors. And since the order is rock, paper, scissors, scissors beats paper, paper beats rock, and rock wrapping around beats scissors, if you subtract your move from your opponent's move, if the result is one, then you win. On the other hand, if it's two away, or negative one, depending on how you do it, you know, because wrapping, your opponent is going to win. So you can, instead of doing this all with ifs, you can kind of do this using the difference between your two moves. So we're going to define scores. And what I started with is I defined my scores as a dictionary. So if the difference was zero, it was um, a tie, so we, I get three points. If the difference was one, I win, so I get six points. But if the difference was two, I lose, so I get zero points. But then I realized that, oh, if I do this, I have to deal with mod and wrapping around, and that's going to be annoying. So I added an entry for negative one, which is the equivalent, um, you know, also it's going to give me a zero. And I added it for negative two, which was going to give me a six. Um, so it just kind of does the wraparounds for me. Um, so I'm going to run that. And then I wrote a little parser. Now, our lines in our input, as we can see, we're going to split them, um, is they're going to be like, you know, A, Y, B, X, C, Z. So what we're going to do here is let's assume a line is going to be like we have like, um, we'll say, well, let's return line. So we're going to say here, let's just say day two, parse part one. And if we say A and Y, Right now, it just returns line. But what we're going to do here is we're going to first, we're going to split the line based on the space. So now, and let's just return A for the time being. Um, need my open paren. And so we can get A or we can get B, got to recompile that, and B, um, and so that's easy enough. There we go. Um, but then we want to see, got to see a little bit more. We've got to see in here, we've got to figure out, well, how many points am I getting for my move? So I'm going to do, and, and ultimately, what is the different, what's the score for this turn? So I'm going to get an index into that scores array, and that's going to be if I subtract, if I get the values of B, so if I get my, you know, B is my move, and so I'm going to get the values of B, so that's going to give me a 1, 2, or 3. I'm going to get the values of A, and A is my opponent. So I, maybe I can even say, that, well, I'll leave it A and B, it's fine. And I subtract them, that's going to be the index into this scores map. And then my score, let me just, just yeah, so let's return the index. And I, I just love how we can just 
do these quick little tests and things. And then my score is just going to be adding together if I get from the values array whatever my move was, so that's going to be my one, two, or three. And I'm going to then also get from the scores array whatever the result from that index is, and that's going to be my score. So there we go. Um, so my score from that particular move is eight. So now part one, is we're going to take our data and then we're going to do similarly to before we're going to we're going to first split it into separate lines so i'm just going to run this first i'll say day two part one sample two and notice it splits our input into the three lines now the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to then take this and on each of the lines we're going to map day two parse part one and those are going to be my scores and then very simply we are going to reduce with the plus and there you have it and that's the solution and um again we we have a similar deal where i can um define day two data and that'll be slurp data day two DIT, and we can do day two part one from day two data, and we have our answer. Now, part two was a little trickier. Um, with part two, what we had to do is we had to, the X, Y, and Z wasn't your move, but it was a clue as to how to do your move. And what the deal was is, um, if you, and let me just, yeah, okay. Um, if you had a move of X, what it said is, um, and I, I'm bringing up the, the, the uh, advent of code on my side window here. I know I'm not recording it. Um, but it says, if, if your move is X, or if your value is X, it means you need to lose. So that means you've got to see what your opponent is playing and play the losing move. Um, if the value is y, then you just have to uh, draw. You have to have the same move as your opponent, so you just have to copy that over. And if the end, uh, your value is z, it means you have to win, so you have to choose the appropriate winning move. So that um, there's a little more to that. Um, so basically, what we have to do for this, and let me just see what the timing is on this. This might be... So we're close to 30 minutes. So I'm actually going to, rather than code it live, um, give me a second. I'm going to pull up a solution. So let me grab this. And paste it in. And let's just go through it because it's already getting close to 30 minutes and I don't want to take forever for you. So what I did here is um, let me come up to here. This is uh, my sample two. Let me just get down to where we were, day two. Okay, so notice what I did here is I made a list of moves A, B, C, and um, what I'm going to do with this is I'm doing this so that we can deal with a mod. So this way we can loop around. Um, so if my opponent was B and I have to win, I know I have to do two more. So that'll go C and use mod to wrap around to A. Um, if, it, if I have to draw, I can choose the same one, etc. And I also um, am storing the index for these to make lookups a little easier. So the way I'm parsing this through here um, is basically I'm saying I've already solved this for part one. You know, I, I've already kind of done the work. I already know how this is going to happen. So what I really want to do is I'm going to transform my input into what it should have been. So, for example, if a line is A x, which means I have to lose, I'm going to transform it to a c. 
because C is 2 over from A, it's going to lose. A is rock, C is scissors, rock beats scissors. So if it's an X, I want to transform that X to a C. On the other hand, and let's just put these in. On the other hand, if it's A and, let's say, Y, that's supposed to be a draw, so I want to transform that from A to A. And then if it's A and Z, I want to transform that to A, B, which is a win. Um, now, again, I could just do this with you know, all sorts of if statements, and it's not particularly hard to do it with the if statements, um, but I'm going to do it with this lookup. So the first thing I do here is, again, I split into the A and the B, and then I get the index of whatever A's move was. So if A's move was A, or if the player, my opponent was A, it's going to give me a zero. Otherwise, it's going to give me, if it was a B, a one, and a C, a two. Now, from there, that means I can look up what they did. So now I've got a decision, so I use a conditional. Well, if it's X, I've got to lose. So whatever their move was, I'm going to get I'm going to take the move index, add 2 to it, and mod it by 3. So if they were, if they were here at the 0 index, I'm going to add 2, and it's going to give me that C value. If it was here, it's going to go plus 2, and with the mod, brings me back to the A, etc. And so that's going to then get that move, so it'll give me the appropriate value of C from A, A from B, you know, etc. Now, on the other hand, if it's Y, I want to do the same thing as my opponent did. So I'm just going to copy over their move. And then the other case, if I want to win, I have to be one over. Um, so once we're there, it's the same code as what we did for part one. Um, so that's pretty much that. So let's compile that. Uh, um, I guess I didn't. All oh, right, I have a... Let's get those done. Now I can get that done. Just do that little test. And so we'll call this day two, part two. And so if we do day two, part two of sample two, that gives us our answer. And I'm just gonna look back on the website to make sure it's correct, and it is. And our data from day two is, um, day two data. So if we do the same thing with day two part two of day two data, and we get our answer there. And that's it. So this is a really nice problem, um, you know, for those CS1 classes, because you can do it just with if statements, but you can also start introducing mod and lookup tables and see the relationships, um, etc. So I hope people enjoyed this. It's a little longer than I wanted, but um, hey, that's okay. Um, so uh, there's going to be a matching blog post for this, I hope, and I'll post this all up hopefully later today. So I don't know if I'll get around to more of these, but if I do, great. Um, I hope. Um, I hope people are enjoying it. Um, but that's it. Okay, so bye for now.